Today we're going to talk about why do bearded dragons glass surf. Glass surfing is when a bearded dragon is stood up, scratching at the glass, always pacing back and forth, scratching, pacing back again, scratching. They're looking for a means to get through a transparent barrier. The crux of the issue is, is they want out of that environment or at least want to get through that barrier. There are many reasons why that may be, but here are a few of them. Typically, if the bearded dragon has just pooped, my bearded dragon will scratch at the glass to want to get away from the horrid smell that is building up in her enclosure or she knows if she, if she scrabbles that I come and clean it. That is a common thing that you see. A lot of bearded dragons will scrabble and glass surf after they've taken a massive dump in their enclosure. Secondly, you might also have incorrect parameters within your bearded dragon's vivarium. This could mean air temperatures that are too high. If it's a bit baking in there and your bearded dragon's like, oh, bit hot in here, and they want to scrabble at the glass, that gets you to open the door so that they can either come out or by virtue of just opening that door, it cools that tank down for them. Just make sure that you're measuring the air temperature in your dragon's enclosure so you know that it's within safe bounds. If it's getting too warm for them, then they might get that little bit uncomfortable. It could also be that they can't get away from the lights. Bearded dragons are made to bask, absolutely, but it doesn't mean they're made to bask at all times and can never leave the radiation upon them. Your bearded dragon is supposed to have your patch of sunshine and that area of shade to go into when they want to cool down and get out of the sun, just like in nature. So if it's like old school and you've got your heat lamps and your UV across the entire enclosure, if your bearded dragon can't escape that, it may be glass surfing to get out to find somewhere that it can get out of those lights. It may be that you've put down fresh soil and that bag of soil was very moist and they're on wet soil and they want to get off that soil. There are many things in the environment that could be off that are uncomfortable or irritating to them that makes them want to be able to get out. Normally it's associated with some form of stressor within their environment. It may be that your bearded dragon is hungry and they actually want to get out and look for food. If they know that there's nothing in that enclosure, but they know that food comes in from outside, they're thinking, I need to go look for the food. And to get through that glass door, they need to scratch. Especially if you've allowed your bearded dragon to wander and come out and hunt for food before. I generally take her out into the hallway and I'll throw a locust or a cricket or something at the opposite end of the hallway and watch her sprint down the corridor to get it. And then I'll turn around and throw her at the opposite end and watch her sprint back across. I do that to get a lot of exercise out of her, but she remembers that and she goes, hang on a minute, if I get out into that hallway, food drops into each corner. So when she's particularly hungry, she might scrabble at that door because she knows if she irritates me enough that I'll open the door and she can hop out and go wander and look for food. The other part of that is it is a means of communication. We think we can't communicate with these animals, but we can. Not only do we learn from them, but they learn from us. For example, if they learn that every time I scratch this glass, my owner opens a door, next time when I want them to open a door, I'll scratch the glass. People think that these lizards are dumb and mechanical and automatons, but they are intelligent, sentient beings who have the capacity to learn, have emotions, and they know what's going on. They're not stupid. I do let my bearded dragon wander this room and it free roam, and that starts with her scratching at the door and me opening it. So we communicated and we set those rules and what that means early on. Just as much as we're training them, they're training us. And if that is something that you have established, what they would do is do it over and over and over again because they know in the past that it has worked. It's not like a case of if one time me scratching the door doesn't open, that means it doesn't work, that means I'll never do it again. No, they remember that if I did it six times out of 10 and six times it opened, it's best to keep trying even though it didn't work the last time. In the same way in the wild, if they would go to sit next to an anthill or a termite mound, the last time they came to that termite mound, there was a big trail of termites and they filled their big bellies nice, big and fat. But this time there's nothing there. That doesn't mean that next time they'll never try and come to that termite mound again because they knew that there's a possibility that it will yield success. So they have long memories, they're intelligent animals, they're not stupid. If you have tanks that are too small for your bearded dragon, well these are animals that need room to run. They have big wide gates and they swing those tails side to side when they run at pace and they need to move for their gastrointestinal tract to digest properly and be fit and healthy. So if you've got them in a tiny little glass tank and they're constantly scratching gets out 
your bearded dragon just needs more space. I also have my cockroach colony in the room on the floor in the far side of the room, but my bearded dragon can still see them outside of her vivarium, so she glass surfs to try and get to the colony. So what you can do is try and put them out of view, out of mind, but I do think they have object permanence, so even if they're not there anymore, my dragon would scratch and I'd let her out and she'd wander over to the space that the roaches were. So she remembered, she had an idea in her head of what she wanted to do, even though the roaches weren't even there. And sometimes, bearded dragons are just bored and they do just want to go for a wander. Sometimes a bearded dragon just wants you to open a door. My bearded dragon will scratch and I'll open the door and she'll just sit there and watch me. And she'll happily sit there for the next three hours and just sit and look around the room, happy as Larry, and doesn't want more than that. Sometimes they don't even want to leave the precipice of their vivarium. And it can just be that they struggle with a transparent barrier. Its official term is Interaction with Transparent Barrier, or ITB, and dragons in particular struggle with the idea of glass, they don't really understand it, so even if you have none of this communication or relationship with a new dragon before, like I have with my dragon nuggets, you can find that they'll just do it from the onset because they don't really understand glass. If you have your dragon in a completely glass tank, you can try and put some like card on the outside of the walls to try and limit that around areas that you're not going to be looking in through to try and help them realize that they can't go through that barrier and it's not open space because you've impeded their vision. Also, sometimes it's very seasonal, like this time of year, like springtime, my dragon's just come out of brumation. She's been groggy for a few months, just waking up and coming out of that. Now she's at this peak of activity in spring where she wants to rush around and she has this whole load of energy that she wants to use and she wants more space than she already has. Then she'll go into summer and she'll get into estivation mode and start sitting around. So that behavior will decrease unless the air temperatures get uncomfortably hot and she wants that door open. So you need to realize that there's always a reason behind it and you need to figure out what that reason is because your bearded dragon is trying to achieve something. The one thing that might be happening that sits outside of all of that I just said is that if they're developing eggs. Now, female bearded dragons, if you overfeed them, the excess calories will cause them to start building up and making infertile eggs. And then they'll start getting broody and start looking for nest sites. So if you see a bit of dragon repeatedly scratching in the corner of a tank and they're scraping their claws to the side of them like this in the corner along the floor, they might be trying to actually nest and dig. And if they don't have substrate, then that actually exasperates the issue and causes them to scratch the glass even more. If you see that, it's best to give them a lay box. If you aren't giving them actual substrate in their enclosure anyway, which you should be, by the way, plenty of videos on that, then at least give them a lay box for them to actually dig in and feel settled and feel comfortable that she has a decent nest site. Otherwise, she's going to be like, oh, I don't have a good nest site. Panic, 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 stress, stress, stress. And then the scratching and stress gets worse. My bearded dragon actually has a messed up claw, which now goes sideways into itself, which you have to go to the vet to get cut because the previous owner allowed her to scratch that much that she debedded the claw on her foot and now she has an issue that I need to basically micromanage. There are some things that you can do to alleviate the problem. If you really can't allow your dragon to free roam because you need to be away and do something, then what you can do is try to extend their feeding and foraging periods. Something that I like to do is pick her weeds and then just chuck the weeds behind things anywhere in the enclosure. So that extends a period of time that she then wanders around her own enclosure, foraging. And the more time she spends doing that, the more she's concentrating and engaged and has agency within her enclosure. She's doing something else. You take the feeding window from this in a food bowl all the way up to this when they're wandering and trying to get to say some weeds that are falling down between two logs that she can't really get to unless she actually uses her muscles to try and get in there. You really want to engage these dragons brains. They're not stupid. They've been shown in studies to dream. They will watch a TV screen of another dragon doing a task in studies and then copy that and just do it straight away. These are intelligent animals and we need to treat them like intelligent animals. And I know that I've iterated that a few times now, but so many people ask me this question and I give them this answer and they're like, no, that's not it. That's that you're anthropomorphizing. I'm like, I'm not. You're just being ignorant to the fact that these are actually intelligent animals and you're not allowing yourself to see the solution to your problem. So you're allowing it to carry on. But that's a topic for a whole other video. If you have a reptile room and you have opposite vivariums across from your tank that holds your bearded dragon and they can see a conspecific or another agama like reptile and they are threatened or at least want to go engage with that other animal, they might scrabble at the grass to try and come out to go engage with that animal. So there are 
are many things that you might see that can cause that. And it isn't such a thing as black and white. Individual dragons will have individual wants and needs. And an individual thought that comes across an individual animal's brain will cause them to want something. So you need to dial yourself in to your individual dragon and learn them and learn their wants and needs. And then learn to anticipate what it is they're actually trying to achieve. And if you're worried that your care is off your bearded dragon causing them to scratch at the glass, then you're going to want to watch this video right here.